Hi, I'm Ross Mayfield, Investment Strategy Analyst at Baird, and we are back for another weekly update with our friends at Strategus. Today, I'm thrilled to be joined by Chief Economist Don Rissmiller to talk all things markets and the economy. Don, how are you doing today? Very good, Ross. How are you? Doing really well. Thanks so much for joining us. Um, I want to talk kind of high level about what's going on with the Fed and the economy, but I, I want to set the table a little bit. So the Fed is raising interest rates to reduce demand in the economy and thereby lower inflation, bringing demand down to meet supply. And a huge piece of where inflation is, at least domestically, is coming from the U.S. labor market. So tight labor market, uh, high wage growth, high cost inflation, and therefore price, price inflation. So I want to ask, what are you seeing on the labor market front and where do you think we go from here? And if I can ask one more question, is it enough yet for the Fed to begin thinking about pivoting their strategy? Yeah, Ross, it's a really important question. So the labor market in the U.S. has basically been overheating for most of this year. We have low unemployment. If we look at weekly jobless claims, those have been quite low. And we've been adding a substantial number of payroll jobs. From here, we're very likely to see the lagged impacts of prior tightening. So the labor market should start to slow down. We should start to see payroll gains slow. We should start to see unemployment rise. That's never a good thing to argue for job loss. But in this situation where supply and demand are out of balance, it's probably better to have that situation where we have a moderate rise in unemployment than to keep dealing with 8% inflation year after year after year and seeing that become entrenched. So it's really a choice between two bad outcomes. And it looks like the Fed is set here to risk a recession if necessary, to see some labor market slack develop, and to use that to tamp down inflation. So there will come a point where they can stop raising as aggressively. And we might not be there yet, but we're probably getting close. We probably don't need 75 basis point rate hikes meeting after meeting here. But that's still probably the default for the November meeting, unless between here and there we get some different data. Right. And there will be plenty of opportunities for that data to come in. And the Fed has stated they want to be data dependent from here on out. Um, so it makes a lot of sense. Uh, now, we know the job market is important, but uh, it's it's part of a broader picture of inflation. So let's look elsewhere for a minute. What are you seeing on the front of supply chains, which we know have been a big contributor? And what are you seeing on on housing, which is another huge piece of this? Are there are there encouraging signs elsewhere or do we have a lot a lot of work else to do? There are some encouraging signs when we look at supply chain pressure, particularly in goods. So product issues. And then when we look at transportation, so the product bottlenecks, like not ordering semiconductors correctly, not having enough autos on the lot, backing up the port in terms of transportation problems, those look like they're starting to get better. The New York Fed has a supply chain pressure index that is global. That started to look a little bit better. When we look at the regional Fed surveys and we look at measures of supplier deliveries, as well as supply chain pressure, we're seeing some relief there. So the goods part of the economy is starting to improve in terms of the flow of product. It's the service sector and the labor market that really is the anchor. Right, and so let's let's return to housing quickly because it has gotten a lot of attention. Um, the affordability of housing, rapidly rising mortgage rates, uh, but to date, we haven't really seen prices begin to roll over in the way you might expect the Fed would want them to, you know, to kind of be in line with their inflation target. So are we seeing enough cooling in the housing sector, in your opinion, that the Fed can accomplish their goal and kind of pause, you know, their, their tightening policy over the next six to 12 months? So we're not there yet, but if we give it six months, then it should look considerably different. The leading indicators, if we look at single unit housing permits, as an example, have already started to come down. And we've seen some weakness in existing home sales, new home sales, mortgage applications for purchase, as well as mortgage applications for refinancing. So there's enough that is turning lower to say, okay, we've seen an inflection point in the housing market. We're just starting to see it in price. And this is after a very substantial increase over the past year. So first, we'll see some moderation in those price gains. There may be areas where we actually see declines, but that's still ahead of us. Give it six to 12 months. And I think the home price picture will look very similar to the housing activity picture and especially the leading indicators at what have already been registered. All right. So with all those kind of granular pieces talked about individually, let's pull it all together. 
Uh, we know that the first and second quarter saw negative real GDP growth. It sparked a conversation about whether we were in a recession or not. Um, how is Q3 shaping up, which is our current quarter? Um, should we be back to positive real growth in that quarter? And what is your outlook going forward from there? So Q3 looks like it's going to be positive. Tracking estimates uh, for the last few weeks have actually been increasing if you look at something like the Atlanta Fed GDP tracker for this uh, quarter. So we've been bouncing around. The, the reason the first half might not qualify as an official recession is we didn't have all of the parts of the economy weakening. Recessions are usually contagion events that spread throughout the economy. We had problems to be sure, but not those type of data series all hooking lower at the same uh, point. So we're still not out of the woods. The risks still skew to the downside simply because whatever this has been for the past three quarters, it's not enough to open up slack and to remove the pressure that the Fed is creating through their actions. So if they're not done, then the downside risk is not done. So this will probably last into 2023 where risks will continue to skew to the downside until we're confident that inflation and inflation expectations are anchored. Well, we'll hope to talk to you again between now and then uh, to get the updated outlook. But Don, I, I wanna thank you so much for the time today. And uh, as I mentioned, hope to talk again soon uh, shortly. Thanks Ross.